Hey guys, welcome back to A Veteran's View. I am your host, Patrick. And today I kind of wanted to really go through, um, go into detail on finances. And specifically budgeting. Because, at least from my own experience, and I imagine for a lot of you guys, I've got quite a few friends who, you know, have told me they don't budget. They just wing it every month. They're, uh... You know, they're never really too worried about not having enough money. Um, so I really just kind of wanted to cover budgeting because I feel like it's something we could all get better at or just start doing in general. Um, <clears throat> so the other reason I kind of wanted to do this right now, even though this is a part of my, you know, bettering yourself in 2021 but also with the stimulus checks and you know what's going to happen under the Biden administration in terms of additional benefits, additional compensation. There's all these different things that are kind of floating around in the air right now. And I feel like you know, if we could be getting pretty substantial amounts of money, we should want to make sure that we do not waste that money. So <clears throat> my purpose is I'm going to go in, in very good detail in terms of different tools, how to do a budget, why you should do a budget. Um, but the majority of this video is going to be hands-on. So I'm actually going to be showing you guys and explaining each piece of at least how my wife and I, how we do our budgets and why we do them the way we do. Um, and, you know, just kind of another thing to think about is budgeting. A lot of people don't like budgeting because they have this feeling that it somehow limits, I don't want to say limits, it prevents them from spending money. That's why they don't want to do a budget. The funny thing about that is if you actually stop and think about it, if you do a budget, you are actually empowering yourself to spend money because you are setting aside a particular dollar amount each month for each of your different categories whether it's rent utilities phone bill going out to eat hobbies whatever it is if you're setting money aside for those things then when it comes down to you needing to make a purchase instead of having that thought in your head like Oh, I really want to buy this game. You know, I really want to get this. I really want to go here. But I don't know if I have the money for it. And I imagine, because I've done that a lot in my life, I imagine you guys have probably done that a lot in your life as well, where you have to pause and you have to ask yourself that question. Now, the nice thing about having a budget is that question answers itself for you. Especially if you're utilizing like one of the app-based budgets that you can use, um, which I'm going to show you a couple different ones because they tie in directly to your bank account. They're free. And what they do is when you do spending or when you make a purchase on your card, the software within the app categorizes your expenses. But then also, let's say it miscategorized it, you can override what's in the system and you can fix it. So if, it, if you went to Walmart and you bought $150 worth of whatever, let's say anything other than groceries, the app may look at Walmart and it may automatically want to put gro or Walmart that expense in the groceries category. So you can actually go through and override that and, and fix, you know, where your money went. Um, but then I think one of the biggest issues, <clears throat> at least for people who are married or in a relationship or they have joint finances, is a lot of people don't like talking about money in their relationship. And I used to be the same exact way because we never budgeted. It was always, hey, can we afford this? Hey, let's do this. 
And the way I viewed that was, well, we've got the money in the bank account, so yeah, we can do it. But typically what ended up happening, there was always some expense that I was forgetting that we hadn't paid yet or <clears throat> something came up that we didn't have the money for. And then those purchases ended up, you know, hurting us financially. So that's kind of what I'm trying to, to help you guys prevent. <clears throat> and also it, it increases, it, it paves the way for much better dialogue in your relationships because at least from my experience and from talking to a number of women, they love the feeling of that safety. And <clears throat> if your finances are out of whack, they are not going to have that feeling of safety because they don't know, is their rent going to get paid next month? They don't know, are we going to be late on the car payment? Now it's going to hurt my credit. They don't know these things, so then they have to worry about them. Whereas if you're able to come together, sit down, it may be frustrating, it may be challenging initially the first couple months because you're going to have to be adjusting totals and you actually have to, you're forced to look your spending in the face. And then you're going to see just how much money you spent on Amazon, just how much money you spent on Kohl's, just how much money you spent at Target. And then you're really going to start you know, figuring out, you know, holy cow, you know, every month I'm spending two, three hundred dollars extra or four or five hundred dollars extra. <clears throat> I don't even know for what. And I know that sounds sad, but that's been my experience. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have had that same experience. So let's kind of use this, learn together, learn from each other. Um <clears throat> Pretty much after I'm done talking, I'm going to dive right into um, kind of showing you an example, step-by-step, -step, different options for budgeting and, and different tools, different types. You know, you can use software based on a computer or phone. You can do like an actual printed worksheet that you can fill out, or you can just do it on a piece of paper. Um, it can be as complex or as simple as you want it to be, but just doing the budget will make you feel a lot better, at least after you get over the realization of how much money you're spending that is unnecessary spending because that will probably irritate you a little bit. But at the same time, <clears throat> if you're able to take control of that, then that's a win for you and that's a win for your family because then you're going to be able to succeed financially. So with that, let's go ahead and jump right in. All righty, guys. Well, let's, let's take a look at what we got here. So on my whiteboard, I've got at the top monthly budget. Now, before you and your family actually do a budget for yourself, on the left-hand side of the whiteboard, I want you to kind of do this challenge here. So for one month, I want you to track your spending so pretty much know and keep an idea of what you're spending your money on now one of the interesting things is there are a lot of people out there who believe that these major or big purchases are actually what cause a lot of financial woes in the household what's actually quite funny about that is that's actually not the case what actually is more detrimental to your finances are those small daily purchases that are made stuff like starbucks dutch bros stopping at the gas station getting one or two energy drinks getting a snack while you're there bag of chips or you know, whatever it is, that's actually where we end up blowing our budget. And the reasoning behind that is when you're looking at making a big purchase, typically you are looking at your finances. You want a new TV, you're just not going to show up at the store with no idea how much money is in your account and just buy this new TV. 
But if it's those daily purchases, oh, I'm just going to Starbucks. Oh, you know, my coffee's only five bucks. I'm going to Dutch Bros. If I get one of their specialty coffees, it's like seven bucks. If I'm going to the gas station, a couple energy drinks, bag of chips, you know, that's six, seven bucks. When you make those kind of purchases, you do that without batting an eye. Now, the thing is, sure, you know, five, six, seven, eight dollars a day is much less than a two, three, four, five hundred dollar TV. But the thing is, with the TV, you're at least thinking about it. With the small coffee expenses and gas station expenses, you're not thinking about it. So that's the challenge. Track your spending for one month. No budget. Just keep track of what you're spending. Now moving on to the right side of the board. I've got three ways or three different um, ways you can go about creating a budget. So you've got your app-based budgets. So those would be things like uh, mint.com, um, YNAB or YNAB, personal capital, and honeydew. So those would be like your app base. And there's a ton of them out there. Those are just kind of the four most popular. Um, in terms of the second one, you've got like a straight up paper worksheet. It's something you could go online. You could just type in budget worksheet or household budget worksheet, print one out, and you would just fill it out month by month. Then the third one would just be using a standard piece of paper, just writing it in a notebook. And, you know, either one of those three could be quite beneficial. Um, I will say the one advantage that the app base does have is if you're doing the worksheet or writing it in a notebook, you're probably not carrying that worksheet or that notebook with you at all times. If you do it on the app based, you can set them up to give you notifications and you can set them up. So if you're at a store, you can log into the app and you'll know exactly where you stand within your budget. Do you have money for this or do you not have money for this? So then in terms of actually starting your budget, what you want to do is you want to first start with your mandatory for sure spendings, the things that you know are not do not change month to month. So things like rent, car payment, car insurance, cell phone bill, internet bill, trash bill. Those ones that do not change. And then you'll move into the ones that you have monthly, but that kind of fluctuate. So, you know, like your electric bill, your water bill, um your food bill, you know, things like that, where the amount stays kind of within, you know, $50, $75, $100 of the budget. Um, just kind of depending on what happens that month. If it's wintertime, if it's summertime, you're running the AC more, you're running the heater more. So what you want to do, we'll kind of move into our next um, presentation here that I got on the board. So what you want to do, so here we go. I've got an example of a budget. This is a February budget. These are artificial numbers. These are just going to show two particular scenarios that you could face. So in this particular budget, everything that's in green is money coming in. Everything that's in red is money going out. So for instance, looking at this budget, the income I've got is $5,000. The expenses I've got are $3,880. Then below the expenses, I've got it broken out. Rent, car, utilities, food, internet, insurance, credit card payment, gas, miscellaneous. That could be like random things, toilet paper, paper towels, cleaning products, stuff like that. 
reoccurring expenses those can be things like netflix subscription hulu subscription disney plus espn plus hbo max um and then if you are a a person of faith then i've got your tithing in there as well so pretty much looking at this when you add up all of these expenses and once again like i mentioned these are made up artificial numbers based on if this was a particular person, let's say his name's Johnny, Johnny's got an income of $5,000. His monthly expenses are $3,880. So that means at the end of every month, just based on those expenses, he's got $1,120 left over. Now the amount that is left over, that can then roll over to your what's called discretionary spending. Now what this discretionary spending is, is these would be things like saving, hobbies, um, allowances, like a personal allowance for yourself or your spouse or for your kids. Um, if you're trying to save money for maybe vacations or you want to take a trip. Um, another thing would be um, saving for like birthdays and Christmas if you start like at the beginning of the year and every month you're setting aside a certain amount of money for birthdays and Christmases it makes those holidays a lot easier when they get closer to because you've been saving for a substantial period of time unless your birthday is in like January or February or March then you don't have as much time um, but I kind of go more into detail on those in my um, envelope system which I will discuss in a separate video so <clears throat> the reason I, I want to go over this you know with these different stimulus programs that are you know whether it's the extended federal unemployment if they do do the $600 per week um, federal or the federal unemployment extension and they do that retroactive or they back pay it um, the stimulus payments themselves, you could be getting a large amount of money deposited into your bank account. And we just want to make sure that you are using that money wisely. Now, there's nothing wrong with buying some stuff for yourself or your family. But make sure you've got all your ducks in a row first. Make sure you've done the responsible thing and you've set yourself up to be in a position to do those things do not go out and blow it if your budget is way out of whack which i will show you right now this particular individual right here so this is our next person let's say this is sally this is sally's budget for the month of february sally's got an income of three thousand five hundred dollars a month when we look at her expenses She's got expenses of $3,945 a month. So that means that Sally is spending more money every month than she is bringing in. You can look at her expenses. Rent, $1,750. Car, $400. Utilities, phone, food, insurance, gas, miscellaneous. Then you see some, are, some of the spending that's important to her. You've got her hair, her nails, eating out. And then she's got her reoccurring expenses. So now some of these bottom ones, when you look at the fact that Sally is running a deficit every month of $445, this is those bottom ones, that is, those are her perceived mandatory spending. The reason I say perceived is Sally has put herself in a position to where she believes she has to spend money on these things like it is a requirement for her survival well i'm sorry to say this ladies but it's not so what we then need to do here we take a look at the deficit sally has zero dollars in discretionary spending so what that means if we think back on our last budget where johnny had money to save where johnny had money to um, you know, things for hobbies, doing allowances, planning trips. 
Sally can't do that. So what's probably happening is Sally is probably putting a lot of these expenses on a credit card. And that credit card is just getting racked up every month, month after month after month. So what we need to do for her is we need to fix the deficit. And this is what we can do. She needs to look at the budget, which expenses are actually mandatory. So then if we're able to get her to admit to herself, hair and nails, that's not mandatory. Her hair and nails would save her $225 a month in this example. Now, that doesn't fix the deficit, but that cuts the deficit in half. Then let's say she keeps looking. She goes, you know what? I can stop eating out. So instead of eating out, I'm going to cook at home now. So that's going to cut the eating out out. That's $150 a month. Once again, she still has a deficit, but it's much smaller. So then she could look at potential reoccurring costs. Some subscription she has. Um, and maybe get rid of some of those. And then what can end up happening, you know, even if she's got a little bit left over at that point, what she can then do is look at things like her phone bill, her insurance bill, things like that. She can call those companies. She can tell them, say, look, I'm thinking of switching phone providers. I'm thinking of switching insurance companies. And you can kind of haggle with them. They would rather offer you a discount than lose you entirely. And just getting a discount from both of those could turn this deficit, coupled with the other things that Sally cut out, into a positive situation. So that's one way she could do it. She could cut some of her expenses. But there's another way she could do it as well. She could also increase her income. So depending on her situation, you know, if she's single, no kids, no nothing, she's in a much different, she has a much greater ability to add income to herself. Whereas if she's in a relationship or if she's got, let's say she's single, but she has kids. So that would kind of be dependent on your situation. But if we're looking at increasing income, there's some very easy ways you can do that. You've got things like drive for Uber, drive for Lyft. You can do Instacart, which is like grocery shopping for people. Or you can do DoorDash, which is like, you know, delivering food to people. Um, those actually pay pretty well. You'd be surprised. Um, you'd be really surprised, actually. I'll include a couple of, a couple screenshots in here. Um, so my wife and I did this last year. So just to give you guys kind of an idea how much you can make. Um, then you could also look at obviously getting a part-time job. Um, and then if you're, you know, a creative person or you have some really good ideas, um, you could make some items. So I'm sure everybody's heard of Etsy. You could open up a little shop on Etsy. You could sell things there. Shirts, gadgets, water bottles, signs, pretty much anything you can think of that you can buy is on Etsy. Or another thing you could do would be flip items online. You know, if you've got an eye for getting good deals, um, I've done that myself where I've bought um, a few cell phones from people who were selling cell phones. They didn't know what the cell phone was actually worth. I'd buy it from them and I'd have a buyer lined up right afterwards. I'd turn around, sell the phone, make 50, 75, sometimes 100 bucks just off one deal. Um, <clears throat> but you got to have an eye for that kind of stuff and you got to have the, the want to do that. So pretty much with, uh, so this, this would be how your budget would look. Now, in terms of using the app based or using a worksheet, um, the app based is very simple. You have to make an account and, and all of them operate 
pretty much the same exact way. Make an account, you go in, you tie in your bank account. So most of these are free, most of these app-based ones. Um, you tie in your bank account, which is totally safe and secure, as long as you trust your bank. <laughs> um, and then you'll go through and you'll make your budget. They have drop downs where you'll put like rent. How much is your rent? This, how much is your car? How much is your insurance? You'll fill all of it out with all those categories of spending. And then you'll also input your income. So if you've only got one source of income, you can input it in there. You can put, hey, I get paid $2,500 every two weeks. You can put that in the app and it'll track it. Hey, every two weeks, he's got $2,500. And as you spend money, when that money's leaving your account, you're going to see that in real time. Um, <clears throat> the only other one that's really different in terms of the app-based would be... Um, I've got it written down here. would be Honeydew. Now, with Honeydew, what makes Honeydew unique is it's actually designed for couples who have separate bank accounts. Now, you know, and, and I, I know more and more you know, you have separate bank accounts, but let's say you have one individual bills account. And then depending on how your setup is, when it comes time to pay bills, you know, person A in the relationship puts their money into that bills account. Person B puts their money into that bills account. But what it does is both people, if they sign up, person A and B, they're able to see each other's expenses in relation to the bills that they are responsible for. So not that we necessarily need to be stalking what our partner is spending their money on, but you're able to, you know, if, if you see that, you know, your wife just placed an order on Amazon and she's really close to going under the amount of money that she needs left over to pay for bills, you can, you know, that starts that conversation. And obviously you don't come at it from a point of attacking the individual. You just want to understand, you know, like, hey babe, you know, I see you bought X, you know, were you aware that you've only got this much left? And, and it could be something simple or it could be like, yeah... You know, I, I know we needed that, but I had to buy this because of this. And, and it makes for those small, simple conversations on the spot. And you can correct those on the spot. So it doesn't get built up to where it actually becomes an issue. And... You know, I'm I'm sorry for the for the long windedness of this um, of this video, but there is a lot of information, a lot of very important information that we need to make sure gets covered. So let's see here. All right, so here's a <clears throat> here's a really good example of a household budget website or a household budget uh, like one of the printable um, printable budgets where you could easily print one out every month. You and your wife sit down and you have that conversation. And it's got everything. And it's this is very specific. This may be more specific than the average person needs. But that's okay. So you've got everything on here. All your income streams. Mortgage, rent, electricity, gas, water, cable, internet, furnishings, lawn, furnishing, lawn 
uh, and garden, home supplies, maintenance, groceries, personal supplies, clothing, cleaning. I mean, this is very, very, very detailed. Now, this may be too detailed for some of you. You may be like, you know what? That's cool, but I don't want something that detailed. That's fine. If you want something a lot simpler, you can do something like this one. Where it's very simple. You know, rent, car payment, gas. So you've got your fixed expenses, and then you've got your variable expenses. You know, food, groceries, eating out, gas, electric, sewage, um, entertainment, extras, and then any of your, you know, if you've got credit card payments, student loan payments, personal loan payments. This is a much more simplified version. You would put your budget, your actual, and then you figure out the difference. So every month you could look and see whether you're hitting your budget goals or whether you're not. If you are not hitting your budget goals, then that tells you that is an item that needs to be focused on maybe a little more heavily. Are you spending more than you should be in that category? Or are you under budgeting that category? And do you actually need to raise your budget for that category? And that's what this allows you to do. Now, the last one would just be a standard written budget on a piece of scratch paper or in a notebook. And it would cover the same exact expenses. The nice thing, it, the only expenses that are going to be on the paper are what you write. So you can tailor your expenses perfectly to your situation and only include what you want. But you can set it up the same way. You've got your expenses and what they are, how much your budget is, how much you spent, what's the difference. Did you go under budget or did you go over budget? So, I mean, at the end of the day, guys, you know, I hope, I know this video is longer than any of my other videos, but this is very important material and... You know, the first few years of mine and my wife's marriage, we were not very smart with our money. Um, we had a lot of opportunities to make really smart choices, and we made really stupid choices. So I'm just trying to help everybody to make sure that they are on the right track and that they are setting themselves and their family up to be successful. That's my hope at the end of the day. And then like I mentioned, coupled with a lot of these stimulus payments, we really need to be careful with budgeting and, and ensuring that we are not just going buck wild with these payments that we're getting. Um, so with that guys, I truly hope you appreciated this content. If you guys like the video, please hit the like button. If you guys want to see more of this content, please hit the subscribe button or um, turn on notifications. My plan right now is I'm doing a video a day. Um, as I'm trying to grow my channel, the more content I put out on YouTube, the more likely YouTube is to promote my content and get more people following. And then it starts this cycle where I can grow. I can provide you guys better content, more detailed content. And, and we can be on this journey together to make 2021 a better year. Finances are very complicated. It's a very multifaceted um, series of steps. And budgeting is one of those steps, but I believe it is the most important step. So with that, guys, take care. I'll talk to you later. Bye.